Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be learning about pipeline uh, plans and profiles. Uh, so it's very easy to do this, very very easy. And uh, here we have a representation of one of them. Uh, this is a plan and profile as you can see. This is a plan on this side and this is the profile on this side. So this is representing maybe a transmission main or a distribution main um, supplying water from a source down here. Uh, as you can see this is a zero chainage and then going all the way to the supply area it could be a tank it could be a supply area um, or a, a town just a supply area so as you can see this is the pipe moving uh, here from the south going all the way to the north here and then on the right here you have the profile so this is how it maneuvers horizontally um, this is how it maneuvers horizontally and then you have uh, this is how it maneuvers vertically okay as you can see down here, there's also a data band. Um, this is a data band. It's showing the information about this pipeline. You can see uh, it's showing information just like um, existing ground level. It's showing us this is the existing ground level. And and uh, we have uh, the depths of the inverts, okay? The depths of the pipe uh, to the, not the crown, uh, but to the, uh, the bottom of the pipe. And then you have the changes from zero all the way to the end. And then you have... Um, trench bottom level so this is the level this is the ground level this is the bottom level and then here you have the difference you have the difference and here you can see the the sheets uh, it's it's already been placed on the sheets and you can see it's broken into uh, mini profiles because of the steep slope and and then here on the right we have uh, the the next section that is a built uh, flat uh, up here and, and mild. So what we are going to do today is um, draw this uh, design profile. Um, we are not going to cover the data bands. Uh, these data bands are covered in another uh, video that I will share at the end of the uh, this recording. And then uh, what we will do simply is to show how to do this design profile. It's pretty simple uh, because. Uh, um, it's an easy process and then we won't just uh, create it uh, we will have to follow our design criteria so let's go to a design criteria first of all let's establish whether this existing profile is is following the criteria so if you go to um, here a PDF that I have here this is the Kenya what is water design manual uh, 205 and here you can see some criteria for for laying um, this is a chapter on pipelines so this is the cover and slope of pipes can see here these are uh, the pipelines uh, shall be put in straight lines between changes in gradient so there are no curves no curves in uh, in pipeline so if you're doing uh, pipeline design you just pick tangents and tangents so in between change of gradient you do straight lines and then the slopes shall at no place be less than 0 0.5 for diameters 200 and less than 0 0.2 for bigger pipes so we go with a stricter uh, parameter of 0 0.5 even for bigger pipes so let's ensure everything is greater uh, than 0 0.5 and then um, here minimize the number of changes in grade the pipe shall be laid with a cover carrying from a, no a normal minimum of 0 0.6 to a normal maximum of 3 meters so you don't want to follow the existing ground to the letter so you're given a leeway to go deeper so in as much as we don't want to go very deep in water supply pipes we are given a leeway to go all the way to 3 meters so that we do not try as much as possible to follow the existing ground and then here, uh, you have the pipeline um, must not be designed having local high points where air pockets may de develop without having any chance of being released. So yeah, you try to uh, minimize the local high points. And any any point where you have uh, a peak, that's a point where you can introduce an air valve where you can release the air. Then here, next, you have the minimum cover over unprotected pipes in areas where motor traffic may occur shall be 0 0.9. So as an engineer, you don't know whether... Um, where you're laying your pipe, uh, a car may, may decide to park there, uh, probably because maybe uh, there's a malfunction in the car and, and, and the owner is trying to make sure that uh, they take care of their car uh, back to normalcy. So we try as much as possible to follow this criteria of 0 0.9 anywhere we lay our pipe. So um, for a minimum, we don't do the 0 0.6, but we'd rather go with the 0 0.9 meters, unless um, it's inevitable for you to, to do the 0 0.6. And then the pipeline in road reserve should be located whenever possible 1.5 meters from the edge of the road. Yeah, try to um, 
as much as possible put your pipeline away from the road reserve as possible so that is the criteria uh, uh, with which we are going to do our pipeline profile the last one here is just to um, make sure whenever you are passing um, or doing a road crossing you you follow the instruction given by the ministry for example in Kenya there is a road authority called Kenha and if you are laying a road across uh, their, their, their road uh, they will give you rules they will write a letter you will apply uh, for you to cross your road there either by micro tunneling or um, or uh, or trying to um, or trying to break the road surface and then um, reinstate the road but this latter method is uh, is not encouraged nowadays so micro tunneling is is, is highly encouraged uh, co as compared to this latter method so you you should always uh, follow the instructions of the of the ministry or the road authority as you're doing it so this is the criteria if you go back to the to this pipeline let's see whether it follows this uh, so if you don't know how to put this uh, these labels let's say you did not have these labels so these are the labels that are showing us the slope so if you delete the labels you can uh, put the labels of the slopes and show you whether this is conforming to the 0 0.5 so you click on the profile right click and go to edit labels and here you can go to the lines and in lines you select the percentage grid and then you add it uh, and then you apply and you can see the labels are now populated on the on the uh, design pipeline so here as you can see most of the uh, most of the slopes conform actually all of them conform I don't see any that doesn't conform so if it doesn't conform it's just a matter of uh, editing the grips and then as you can see our invert conforms also, also to the 0 0.9 meter um, criteria uh, 0 0.9 uh, to 3 meter criteria so this invert uh, involves also the pipe diameter plus the the invert of 0 0.9 so you should be careful when you're looking at this invert so this is an addition of the pipe diameter plus the cover so the cover is what should be 0 0.9 so if you add the invert uh, it becomes a, a bigger if you add the pipe diameter i mean it becomes a larger figure so let's see how we we do this let's see how we we lay uh, a pipe quite easily so let's say you have your surface there it's very simple you come and select the alignment tools um alignment oh sorry select the alignment alignment creation tools and <coughs> you can call uh, the the pipe water pipe that's okay and then the type is a center line uh, alignment and then you can describe it uh, you can describe uh, it according to where it is where it is located the diameter all that you can put that if you want let's say it's a 300 millimeter and then located in Nairobi and then for 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 the parameters down here do not put it in the site put it in alignment uh, style proposed that's okay and then alignment labels major and minor only are also okay for design criteria we're not putting any design criteria because this is not a road this is just an alignment that is representing a uh, water pipeline okay so once that is done you just click okay and here you're presented with the layout tools so you do tangents only for pipelines we're just doing tangents there's no need for uh, us to do uh, curves because most pipes are rigid they will not be uh, curving as you move so let's follow this surface let's just follow this surface uh, let's follow it as much as possible let's take our turn here and then let's terminate it at the end once you're done you just hit enter and as you can see that the changes are populated immediately you hit the enter button good good then next we want to do the profile now uh, once you're satisfied with the alignment we do the profile and i will do it very easily i will start with the surface profile and then by clicking the alignment and i go to the contextual tab of the alignment and i go to surface profile and here I add that surface and uh, of course the alignment uh, stations are zero to the end and then I draw it on profile view I'm okay with the defaults and then I create the profile on my right here 
So there we go. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first of all, what I will do uh, to enable me to guide me so that I follow the criteria of depth or cover, I want to copy this file and offset it. I want to copy this property. This is existing ground. This is existing surface. So I want to copy this existing surface and move it downwards uh, uh, to the offset where my design profile is likely to be, where my invert profile is likely to be. So how do I do that? I click on this surface and then I right click and then I go to profile properties and then I go to profile data. Then here where it's written dynamic, I want to change it into static. You cannot um, copy a, a dynamic profile. So for, to enable me to copy it, I will have to go to the properties and change it to static. And then I go to geometry editor up here at the contextual tab and I, I click on copy. So I copy the profile and I copy all the, sta the, the station uh, or the points of vertical uh, po points of vertical interchange or yeah so this PVIs where it's, it is changing gradient so I, I, I want to, to select all of them so I'm copying the entire um, profile and I'm not overwriting it so I just click on that and I click OK alright so I escape and select uh, one of these profiles and I want to, to lower it Okay, I want to lower it to the invert level. So in the, the invert level will probably be the cover plus the pipe diameter, as we said before. So the cover, I'm targeting 0 0.9 as the cover. And then the pipe diameter was 300 millimeters. So 0 0.9 meters and 300 millimeters. 300 millimeters in meters is 0 0.3 meters. So the invert will likely be 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3. So I add them up and I get 1.2. So I lower it to a 1.2. So I click here on the profile layout tools again to lower this to a 1.2. So I click here and type in 1.2. The negative here means we are lowering it. So instead of raising or lower, so if you're lowering, we put a negative. So PVI range is all of them again. So I click OK. And as you can see now, we have two profiles. So this is just to guide us as we do our design profile. So I close this and I start my design profile, which will uh, represent my invert level. So I come here and I go to profile creation tools and I'm prompted to select the profile view. So this is the profile view and this, I call it invert, invert level. Oh, I just call it invert, okay? In my design profile. And then uh, uh, profile style, this is okay. And then I don't want labels for now. I will put the labels when I'm checking the slopes. All right. We do not want any design criteria. We are going with nil because this is just a representation. This is just a representation of how the pipe looks like. This design criteria, you choose it or you select it when you're doing road profiles. Because uh, the road uh, profiles need to conform to certain curves, uh, uh, minimum radius, and all that. So this is just a pipe and a representation. So once you're done, you click OK, and then you have the profile layout tools. Again, quite pretty similar to the alignment tools. And here again, we are doing the tangents. We are not doing any any curves. So here I turn on this snap to snap to the beginning here. I snap there and then I turn off the snap and I follow this, the, the second profile as much as possible. Let me go here. Remember, we have our leeway of three meters, so we don't have to follow this um, existing ground as much as possible. Don't want to follow it to the letter. So we just come, um, just do that. Let's follow it where we can follow it, but where we can't follow it, we just just do it uh, because we have that three meter um, leeway for us to, to we have 0 0.9 to 3 meters, so that is allowed. So you don't have to follow the entire thing as much as possible. So I do it all the way. I'm just following the design criteria where we we, we will not be able to follow the design criteria. We will use our grips to rectify that. 
okay and these slopes you'll have to clarify that they are okay and then and then we go all the way to the end again select the grips and then I skip so now that we have no need for this it's just guided us we do not have any need for it I just delete it and now I want to check whether my design profile is following the right slopes is it following the right slopes so what do we do we select it and then we right click and then we go to the edit labels again we select the lines and then we add the labels for the lines which are the percentage grid then we apply and we click OK and here we go so we have the right slopes let's just follow all the slopes and see whether we conform to the slopes yes we do yes we do this is the lowest we have 0 0.85 we're following uh, the criteria all the way to the end let's say you d you, d you had a, a milder slope than 0 0.5 what you can do is just uh, click on the uh, design profile and use the grips to raise or lower so that you have a steeper slope you have all these grips that can be edited okay so that's it um, if you want to see the video about the data bands you can follow the link um, in the bio of this uh, or the definition of this video so thank you for watching and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and hit the notification button for you to get more videos like this uh, next time. Thank you guys and see you in the next video.